Martin and Richard Denning. Presented by Revlon. World's largest selling lipstick. World's largest selling nail enamel. World's most exciting new compact makeup, Love Pack. Tonight, Mr. and Mrs. North in The Nobles. Jerry, give me your hand. Relax, darling. <coughs> Don't slump, just relax. But darling, I'm, I'm perfectly relaxed. But you're not acting like an old lady. Oh, oh, is that what I'm supposed to do? Well, <laughs> Pam, just how would you act like an old lady? Oh, I mean an old lady in a wheelchair. Oh, well, that makes it very simple. Jerry, the first person I'm to call on tonight is an old lady in a wheelchair, Mrs. Dunstan Noble. Well, why do you have to call on her? Well, darling, it, it's this new thing that the club is doing, volunteer nursing. Mrs. Noble's name is the head of my list. She's appealed for nursing aid. Hmm. Well, you, you run along and see your old lady. I've, I've got a manuscript to read. You could read it in bed. I wouldn't mind. Darling, if you will get yourself involved in these things, don't expect me to get... Of course, get... Jerry, you stay right here and read your manuscript. I'll be gone about three hours. Of course, if I shouldn't come back in that time, maybe you'd better take this copy of my list and try to trace me. These people live in awful neighborhoods. Well, good night, dear. Don't worry. Okay. You win. I'll go with you. Well, you'll have to, you know. Well, I wouldn't want you to meet with a fate worse than death. Besides, I, I guess the time has come when I must learn how to act like an old lady. In a wheelchair. Oh, yes, in a wheelchair. Kind of spooky, don't you think? Yeah. This, this was once a very elegant neighborhood when horse cars were still running. I hope she's home. There isn't a light in the house. Well, it isn't very likely she's gone for a stroll in her wheelchair. It's practically an open invitation. We may as well accept it. Ask if anybody's home. Is there anybody home? Oh, Quick, man, we went up the stairs. Oh, look, there's a light there. Shot. Is she... is she... No, she's still alive. See if there's a telephone in the hall and call the doctor. And call Bill Wigand. You fool, you. You utter fool. How could you have done such a thing? What are you talking about? You know very well what I'm talking about. Now there are people in the house, strangers. And the police will probably be here too. How can we keep them from prying into things? Let them pry. I've got nothing to hide. They'll find out things about the family. Do you want us to be in all of the papers? An eccentric, inbred, decadent family? Is that what you want us to be called? Well, that's what you are, isn't it? And you can add miserly to it while you're piling up the adjectives, because you're that too. You and your crazy mother. And Emerson. That's a fine way to talk about a husband who adores you. Who'd do anything in the world for you. It's just it. He won't do what I want him to do. Do you think I married your brother because I was so impressed with your fine old name? Do you think I want to stay in this ridiculous run-down house and get myself all dust clogged the way you three have? Oh, no. Not I. I've got other plans. You're so selfish, you make me ashamed that I'm a woman. <laughs> You're not a woman. You're a frustrated old maid. And if you'd done what I told you and Emerson to do, 
we could be living the way the nobles used to live. Do you think for one minute that we deliberately have our mother committed to an institution? Well, that's where she belongs, doesn't she? No, she doesn't. But I'm not so sure it isn't where you belong. Your latest little scheme hasn't worked either. What are you babbling about? Mother isn't dead. She's alive. What do you mean? What are you talking about? What's the matter with her? For the love of heaven, answer me. Don't stand there so smug as if I knew. Tell me! You know what's happened. It's a clean wound if I ever saw one. The bullet passed right through the soft flesh of the shoulder. Oh, then she'll be all right? Well, she's in a bit of a pain, but she's had quite a shock. I think I should call in the nurse for tonight. Yes. Nurse is coming here tonight. What could she possibly mean by that? Well, I think she means me. I'm a volunteer nurse. My club had her on my list. Oh, see, I'll put in a call for a registered nurse. Who are you? I'm Dr. Moore. I don't know you. Where's Dr. Crockett? He's away on a little trip. I'm looking after his patients. You don't know anything about me. Oh, I know all about you, Mrs. Noble, and I understand your case thoroughly. But I think that you should have a regular nurse, at least for tonight. I don't want a regular nurse. Too expensive. This young woman will do. Very well, then. Are you willing to stay the night with her, Mrs. North? Oh, yes, yes, I am. No. No, you're not. You're coming home with me now. But, Terry, you have a manuscript to read. Just make no interruptions. Give her two of these pills, then, and stay with her while she sleeps. Of course. How is my mother, Doctor? She's going to be all right. All she needs is rest. Don't let them in here. Cats may stay. They're my friends. Don't want to see any of my family. Oh, hey, Jerry. Hi, oh, Uh, Doctor, this is Lieutenant Wagon, a friend of ours from Homicide. How do you do? How do you do? Lieutenant, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you not to disturb the patient until tomorrow. Nonsense. Let him talk to me now. I'll tell him anything he wants to know. What's the trouble, Mrs. Noble? You know who shot at you? Nobody. Nobody's fault but mine. I was looking at some antique weapons over the library mantel, and one of them must have been loaded, because it went off. That's all. I see. Now you can all get out, except this young woman. You heard me? Get out! Good night, Mother. I'll be around first thing in the morning. All right, Doctor. Good, Good night, night, Jerry. Are you sure you'll be all right? Of course, don't be silly. Well, this is where we found her. Right here, sitting in her wheelchair. Mm. She was sitting here, you say? Mm -hmm. Now, where's the gun she said she shot herself with? Well, there wasn't any gun. What? No, I, I think the old girl was playing some game of her own. And there wasn't any gun when we found her. There's one missing here from over the mantelpiece. Yeah, so there is. I never noticed that. May I help you? We're just checking. Do you know where the gun is that belongs there, the one your mother said she was looking at? Oh, I knew you wouldn't find it here. I was sure Mother wasn't telling the truth. What makes you say that? Well, my mother is a little eccentric, I'm afraid. She hoards things. She won't let anybody touch anything, not even to clean it. There was money scattered all over the floor when we found her. Well, Mother doesn't trust banks. I suppose someone thought she might have some hidden here. Does your mother have any money? Oh, yes, quite a lot. Nobody knows how much. Hmm. Well, what's your idea of what happened here, Miss Noble? I suppose somebody found out about her little peculiarity. This isn't a very desirable neighborhood anymore, you know. Yes, and the door was unlocked when we arrived. That's because of the cat. Mother insists they have full run of the house. She says she's going to leave all her money to the cat. Well, that's been done before. I just read about it in the newspapers. 
Please, if you can. I hope you won't let this get into the newspapers. I should hate to have us hounded by reporters. You know, when my father was alive, we were... We were a very nice family. But things change. You know what beats me is that missing gun. Lieutenant. Yes, Miss Noble? Why don't you ask my sister-in-law about the missing gun? Thanks. Maybe I will. Good night. Good night, Miss Noble. Well, the old lady isn't the only weirdie in the house. I'll say not. Hey, look, Jerry. What do you make of this? Hmm. Probably one of the old lady's hiding places. It's empty now. Yeah, probably her petty cash drawer. Yeah. We have a visitor with us behind the drapes. You behind the drapes, come on out. Who are you? I'm Emerson Noble. I live here. What were you doing there, playing hide-and-seek? I heard you coming. I didn't know who it was, so I hid. There's no harm in that. You know what happened to your mother? Yes. I'm most distressed, Lieutenant. About what? I heard what my sister told you about my wife. You mustn't put much stock in what Anne says. She and Constance don't get along at all well. Poor Anne. You know how it is. A frustrated old maid. She's jealous of my wife because Constance is so beautiful. Why, Constance couldn't tell you a thing, I'm sure. Perhaps not, Mr. Noble. Well, good night. If I can be of any assistance, don't hesitate to ask me. I won't, Mr. Noble. Well, Bill, at least now we know where to come on Halloween. Poor Buzzard obviously has a hopeless crush on his wife. Hey, Bill, look at this. Powder marks here at the door. Yeah, that's very interesting. But then the gun was fired from here. Could be. What are you doing in my room? I knew I'd find it here. Find what? This gun. Here in your bureau drawer. Very clever of you, Constance, but it won't work. You put it there yourself. Oh, no. You can't get out of it that easily. It was right here, under all these things. You're a liar, and you know it. I never touched a gun in all my life. I'd be scared to death, too. But you wouldn't be, would you, Constance? Nothing frightens you, does it, Constance? Emerson, look what I just found here in your sister's room. Don't drink that. It'll be drugged, you see. You stop at nothing. They just want to get me out of the way. Mrs. Noble, you should be asleep. You've taken a sedative. I fooled you. Only made you think I took it. See, I've got the pills right here. Well, you must rest. Don't you think you should take them now? You're a nice young woman. I think one might trust you. Of course you can. Very well. I'll take the pills. But promise me one thing. Whatever happens, don't leave me alone here tonight. I can promise you that. All right. If you get me a glass of water, I'll take the silly things. I could sleep without any trouble. That's fine. You just let yourself drift off.
You know. She's not here, and her bed hasn't been slept in. Oh, Emerson, I'm frightened. You should have hidden the gun better. Now she's stolen it. Heaven knows where she is now. Probably hiding somewhere in the house, waiting to get at you and me. I should have called the tenant wagon last night. Oh, listen, Constance, get out. Leave the house. Let me know where you are, and I'll join you. Oh, we can't, you know that. We haven't money. We've got to find the money. I'll try, Constance. I'll try. If you make a move toward me, I I I'll throw this tray at you. Mrs. North, I'm sorry I frightened you last night. But I'm worried now. Really worried. Oh, you weren't worried last night. Have you seen my sister, Anne? Not this morning, no. She's disappeared. Nobody can find her. I suppose she's dangerous, too. Yes, she is. Believe me. I suppose she also has a gun. She has. She stole it out of my room sometime in the night. She's hiding with it now. So you have a gun, too. Do all of you carry guns in this house? You must believe me. Anne's not in her right mind. <laughs> There's anything I hate is to see a man cry. <laughs> Mrs. Noble, we're going to be very honest with you. I don't believe your story about you shooting yourself accidentally. There are too many facts to disprove it. Now, you were shot by someone from the doorway. There are powder burns on the door jam. Indeed. And there's no trace of the weapon. Why don't you ask my family where the gun is? they probably tell you. Ah! Oh, it's happened this time. I know it. This time it's really happened. <laughs> Forgive me, mother. Nothing I can do until I get that report from headquarters. Well, she certainly was a little weird, but you'd hardly expect her to do a thing like this. Jerry, Bill, I've just come from Mrs. Noble. She's in a terrible state. Anne was her favorite child. Has the doctor come yet? That's a funny thing. They haven't been able to reach him. Oh, now, Pam, don't start suspecting the doctor. Well, why not? He wasn't a regular doctor. We don't even know whether he was a doctor at all. That's true. We didn't ask to see his license. Well, Mrs. Noble can't understand this terrible thing. Uh, well, neither can I. 
Those blocks, for instance. That's right, Lieutenant. Those blocks. That's what I want to see. No, but what are you doing out of bed? What will the doctor say? I had to see for myself. I still don't believe Anne would do such a thing. Mrs. North, are those the blocks you told me about? They haven't been touched. They're just as they were when we found her. You see these blocks, old and worn? They were Anne's. When they were children, Anne and Emerson both had a set. Emerson would never let anybody play with his. Wouldn't even play with them himself. Said he wanted to keep them fresh and new. So, they always used Anne's. Mrs. Noble, what does that mean? That means, Mrs. North, that Anne never would have used those blocks. They were Emerson's. And somebody wants it badly enough to commit murder. Yeah, that's what I figure. And they aren't going to waste much time trying to find it either. Shh. you found it. Do you think it was worth it? Anything is worth getting away from you in this house. Even murder? What are you talking about? We know, Constance, don't we? You killed Anne because she knew you were trying to get rid of Mother. Only you and I knew where those blocks were. What are you going to do? Turn me over to the police? No, Constance, never. As long as you stay with me, no one will ever know. I'm sorry, Mr. Noble, but I'm afraid she's going to leave you for quite a while. Oh, what'd you do, Pam? Hit the jackpot? She was the one, Bill. She tried to kill Mrs. Noble. Anne knew about it, and so she had to kill Anne to protect herself. And then she found the money, but she was too late, because Emerson came down and told her about the blocks. She can't with Emerson because he knows so much. Emerson can't live without her, but he'll have For to be able to Pam! Well, I'm just giving you a simple explanation. Jerry, that's the best I've ever done. It's just perfect. Yes, darling, it's, it's beautiful. Now, uh, may I finish reading my manuscript? Oh, I haven't bothered you, Jerry. You're almost through with your manuscript, and now I can make a perfect bandage. Yes. Oh, that's probably my office. I'll get it. Mr. and Mrs. North has been presented by Revlon, world's largest selling lipstick, world's largest selling nail enamel, world's most exciting new compact makeup love pack. Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy, a John W. Loveton production.
Produced by Federal Telefilm. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSale. This has been a film presentation.